Welcome to another episode of Strange Days Live. This Wednesday, January 31st, 2024. I am your host, Doc. Bringing you the latest and greatest in all things paranormal. Welcome to another chapter. Thank you for joining us as always. Feel free to call us at area code 951 888 0313 during the duration of the show if you want to be online and uh, speak about the subject matter at hand or simply click on the link that will be placed in our comment section in order to bring you into the show for a better sound quality I'm also posting the phone number that will bring you into the show as well There we go. Streaming live at YouTube and at Twitch. You can find our archive section during our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash at strange days live. Or you can find us as well with all our social media links at www.strangedayslive.com. getting ready for a rainy season if you will here in California in the next few days we expect a lot of rain to come down I uh, particularly enjoy the rain quite a lot but I'll be driving out of town so that aspect it tends to hopefully doesn't cause too much trouble if you will when you driving down it's a lot of vehicles that unfortunately get into mishaps or uh, delay traffic by other means of uh, driving in areas that are you know overwhelmed by the amount of rainfall let's see yeah it's supposed to start tomorrow at 11 uh so we'll have tomorrow some rain and friday some rain saturday and sunday we'll have a nice weekend here monday and tuesday we'll go back to the rains again so we'll see what those things bring to us trying to get situated well we'll get to things right away here we go transition into the show mode so today's show is titled the most mysterious song on the internet quite a quite a doozy quite a long title there uh but it's a fascinating uh, story of uh of you know of media lore and uh, generational um, detective work that has been undergoing for almost 10 years and if you haven't had a chance to hear about the most mysterious song on the internet I will be not only playing it for you folks but I will also do a quite a deep dive to bring you up to par um, as far as what it is and how it came to be so Welcome to another episode of Strange Live. Today we'll be doing a deep dive into the enigmatic world of lost media. I am your host, Doc, and today we're going to be embarking on a journey to unravel the secrets surrounding what was better known as the most mysterious song on the internet. Our tale begins in the early 1980s when an anonymous cassette tape emerged which was crawling um, in Germany. This, this, this cassette tape came out of Germany and it was cradling a song inside that uh, was confusing its listeners with a haunting melody and with an unknown origin. But this is not just any song. This is an inception of an internet sensation in the later years, drawing in all kinds of amateur sleuths and music detectives from every corner of the globe. So I want you to picture this. There's a teenager named Darius living in Germany. All he has is an arm without his set recorder. He waits for a late night radio program on the West German plan simply to make a mixtape. I'm hoping to 
will be recording one of the most mysterious songs ever that night. This mixtape that he was curating featured the mysterious track that we had, were considering for our story. Alongside, there was also some songs by the group XTC and The Cure. Unfortunately, or fortunately, for those of us who like to investigate, to ensure the pristine recording, Mr. Darius was able to remove the banter of radio host from his mixtape, as it would make sense. You want to hear the music and not the people speaking in the background. And so any, everything that he, the only thing that he left on the cassette tape, which made sense, was just the raw essence of the music that he recorded that night. So by this, he uh, was able to mask the exact airplay date and the title of the captivating song, Forever Lost to History. The original tape from which the edition came from, to my knowledge, has never been found, only the edited tape. But little did Darius know that his meticulous act would set the stage for a mystery thus transcending time. The song was reportedly recorded from a North Deutscher Rundfunk NDR broadcast sometime in the mid-1980s. Likely or after 1984. We'll stick with the 83-84-ish profile for right now. And it sat on a cassette tape until he uploaded it uh, to the internet in the early 2000s. So in 2004... Darius received an unconventional birthday gift, if you will, from his older sister, Lydia. Lydia got Darius a website domain for which he was able to upload all his musical collection that he had gathered through the years of listening to many radio broadcasts uh, in Germany. And he was able to upload these songs, upload these mixtapes to a vast variety of listeners. Um, this digital domain became the platform for raising awareness about this identifies uh, an identify song that was nestled among Darius's various cassette tapes and personal collections. Armed with a dedication to preserving the musical mystery of his past, Darius actually digitized his entire radio recording, transformed them into either an M, uh, M4A file, which is able to play with compatible Apple devices, or an AIFF file. For those that uh, like to dive a little bit deeper into uh, pre-MP3 uh, formats. The website that uh, was gifted to Darius by his sister Lydia was named Unknown Pleasures after a Joy Division's iconic 1979 album. And this set the stage for a musical journey that would capture the imagination of the, on of the online world and online community. Fast forward to March 18th of 2007, when Lydia embarked on her own online quest for the elusive song. As people joined Darius's website, I believe that generated a buzz over this mysterious track as people could not identify what it was. All the other songs were identifiable and they would probably reach out to Darius and ask him, hey, what's the name of the song? What's the name of the song? When did you record the song? And Darius was oblivious to the fact. He just simply pressed record, edited a tape, years later posted it online, and he started creating a buzz. So his sister decided to embark on her own uh, journey, if you will, to try to find out the name of this mysterious song. And so she sought the help of the internet community at a, at a more uh, bigger uh, audience. And so... Um, she started using a usernet group. This is in 2007. So she eventually migrated to websites equipped with advanced song identification tools, sharing um, an excerpt from the mysterious track on a port on, on platforms like bestofthe80s.de, as in Deutschland or Germany, and also uploaded the song to another community called the Spirit of Radio. Lyria, Lydia, the sister that um, gifted uh, Darius this uh, original website, personal website, started also to cast a digital net that began to riddle across the vast expanse of the internet. As more and more people became involved with the song, the mystery grew. More and more people became interested in with solving this digital riddle. 
and the digital echoes of the song reverberated throughout the internet until it found its way onto a website called What's That Song in 2008 and promptly into YouTube in 2011. The Spanish indie record label Dead Wax Records further propelled the mystery into the spotlight by po posting the song as scripts on their YouTube channel in 2017. This actually caught the attention of Peter Palinson, a friend of Nicholas Suniga, who was the label owner of Dead Wax Records. Intrigued, Mr. Palinson also began his own investigation in 2019. So this song just does things to people that makes you want to investigate and solve the riddle, you know? I guess that's the inquisitive of, 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 of man, of mankind, that we, we can't just settle when there's a mystery. We are sort of, some of us have, um, you know, like a keen um, desire, if you will, to solve, to solve mysteries and be the one that is actually able to employ their detective skills. Or maybe you look outside the box as far as like, um, generating uh, a search, if you will. And so that happened to Mr. Gabriel Palinson in 2019. So, so far we have three key players. Well, two key players, basically. We have Darius, a boy of German descent that in 1984 randomly recorded uh, a song among many. He was able to edit that song and he was able to, years later, place it into an internet archive of songs that he had recorded during that period of time. One of these songs was unable to be um, detected or able to be um, analyzed. Uh, and people liked the song. And so they started asking who the artist was. And this has set forth a quest uh, that's still going on uh, until this day. Let's see here and ban the comments. Hey, Clutch, good to have you on the show. Hey, yep, uh, I think a lot of people actually have heard the story. It's a very interesting story. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm, I'm going to play the song for you guys before I keep going with the show to see if you guys are either maybe familiar with the uh, with the melody, maybe if you guys have heard it, maybe could we maybe solve the mystery here? Strange days. That would be kind of awesome, wouldn't it? Well, here goes the song. See if you've heard it. And So there you go. That's a snippet of the song titled either Like the Wind. Sounds like he's saying I'd like at the wind, but you can find the song under the most mysterious song on the internet. So this song has been remastered a few times, and I believe this is the latest remastering uh, effort. Uh, the lyrics sound very, um, they sound like to have some kind of accent. Maybe people have suggested maybe like a, a German accent. Uh, the music sounds very 80-ish. Um, 
Pretty catchy, actually. I, I, I like the song. That's probably why a lot of people wanted to know who the band was. And that is what to set off the whole mystery, you know, in regards to. So if you guys want to uh, look at the song, just look for, uh, go to YouTube and search for the most mysterious song on the internet. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and share the link to the song here in the show notes and uh, in the comment section. Here we go. So there it is. And if you if you make any comments, if you've heard the song or if you uh, want to come in and kind of th throw your two cents in. So, so far, for those that are just, just joining us, we have uh, an internet, internet, one of those lost, it's called lost media, um, unknown media, I should say. It's not lost. It's just doesn't, we don't know who, who um, who's the person that developed the song. Uh, what we have is a case dating back to 1983, 84 in Germany, where a boy named Darius recorded a song off the radio station, created a mixtape, put it away. Years later, his sister bought him a domain name. He uploaded all the songs that he had recorded during that period to share with others, sort of like a peer-to-peer. -peer. Think about it as a, um, like I said, early, uh, what was the name of that website? Uh, it was a website that you were able to stream songs uh Napster, yeah, think of it like a Napster kind of deal. And then people started commenting on this song. None of them recognized the, who the artist one was, and they liked the song so much, they started contacting Darius, who was the owner of the website. Darius had no idea. People could never figure it out. And then Darius' sister, who was responsible for actually uh, buying Darius this domain that he was able to upload all his music, started doing some research. She started casting uh, a wider net, started going to other online groups, uh, started joining other user net groups. This is before, you know, Facebook, before Twitter, before, um, let's see, before uh, Reddit. And lo and behold, people became interested, but nobody really had an idea. You know, they had comparable bands that they, they thought the song sounded like, but nobody was able to tell them, hey, you know what? The song is by this and this artist, uh, and this song came out in this year. So up until today, believe it or not, there's a, a strong community online of people trying to search um, about, uh, you know, trying to search and to see who who's the artist behind the song. So going back to the comments, Clutch says, it does sound like an 80s tune. Uh, could it not just be a garage band and they put it out uh, in, the, in this January bus? Yeah, it could be. I mean, that, that's they, they've considered that, actually, that it was a, it was a garage band. Uh, however, how did, the, how did the garage band make it into a national syndicated or a national, yeah, national syndicated German uh, radio station? Uh, in those days, you know, this is 1983, 84. It wasn't as easy uh, as you, as we might perceive for, for, for a type of band to get up there. Um, so, yeah, the story, the story gets deep, deeper than that. Um, I guess it would have come forward by now, though. Yeah, unless you wanted, you know, unless you had an obscure little band somewhere and um, and you're more interested in the, in, in the mystery as opposed to saying, hey, you guys, it was us. Or maybe the people that uh, maybe it was produced by one person and the person has since passed away, right? I mean, there's a lot of things to to consider. Hey, Widow, how are you? Very cool. I remember hearing the song a while back. Sounded like a German accent. Yeah, I commented on that. It sounded like a German accent. And the song was actually recorded in Germany in the 1980s. I could hear what sounded like a Yamaha DX7 synth. Man, you're pretty experienced. That's pretty cool. Yamaha DX7 synthesizer in the track. I wonder what, what year the Yamaha DX7 came out. <laughs> my goodness, you answered my question with the next one. That's awesome. The DX7 was released in 83. Cool. Yeah, so this song is like an 80, 83, 84-ish. It's the site. It's what we, uh, we, we kind of concluded based on the research. So to bring the story up to par until now, we've discussed all these things. And then we discussed the fact that uh, Lydia, his sister, cast a white net on the Internet. And this is as of uh, 2007. So that's what kind of stand. And then in 2017, we have a record label uh, owner that got caught uh, of the song. And he published it on his own site, even casting a wider net. So uh, Gabriel Pallinson, who was working for Dead Wax Records, uh, started his own investigation in 2019. And, and what he was able to bring 
into the fold was uh, analyze, to analyze the song further. He expanded the digital footprint of this mysterious song by uploading some esper, uh, excerpts of the song to another YouTube channel and to other various musical related Reddit communities. So if you know if you want anything investigated, Reddit is a good source for people to compile uh, themselves and try to see what's going on. Eventually, the dedicated community of Reddit found its home and created our own, uh, I don't, I, its own uh, community. Uh, if you are a Reddit user, you can go to the Mysterious Song, in which you have daily postings, uh, believe it or not, up until today, about uh, either what, what the song could be or what kind of breakthroughs they've made. So uh, the breakthrough moment uh, that's more pertinent until now will be uh, something that happened in July 12, 2019, when a Reddit user uh, named Johnny Me Too posted the complete version of the song, so this is the first, ver the first time that uh, that the song was posted in 2019. So we consider ourselves lucky to be able to hear the song today, because before I guess it was just a bunch of little snippets, and um, this Reddit user was able to obtain a direct link from one of Lydia's Usenet post before it was deleted. So good job to Johnny. Um, this discovery of having the full song now uh, tri triggered a, a bigger new wave uh, of investigations. The active community actually uh, reached out to a key figure like Paul Baskerville, who was a disc jockey from this radio station in Germany. And uh, Gemma, company, uh, the acronym Gemma, G-E-M-A, which is a German performance rights organization. So they were tr narrowing down uh, by asking the DJ and also by um, reaching to the Gemma Corporation, which as you know, anytime you play music, uh, there's identifiable facts uh, or identifiable fingerprints within the music itself that, uh, that makes it uh, recognizable and makes the song uh, monetarizable as well. You know, if you play it, you're, if you create a song and you play it on the radio, there, there's a way for them to be able to track it. Uh, when it was played, who played it, how many people listened to it, and so so forth. And also, if you have um, if you have any website apps like Shazam and your phone that are able to to recognize songs when they, you know, when you're in a store or when, or when you're somewhere and you like a song, they have a, a footprint, these songs that are able to be identified. Uh, so don't try Shazam. I've tried it. I'm so millions of people have tried it and it, it just comes up to the most mysterious song on the internet. Um, so Paul Baskerville, who's a disc jockey from the radio station, uh, in a gesture of collaboration with the whole community, actually played the song on his radio show named Knocked Club or Nightclub on July 21st, 2019, just a few days after the whole song was made available. Uh, throughout the broadcast, uh, though the broadcast yielded no new leads, it brought Lydia and Darius into the fold of this uh, intensified investigations. So I, I believe they were able to get back with the original recorder of the song and with Lydia herself, the, the person who's involved into bringing the internet into this mystery. Um, in the following years, uh, there was a Reddit user by the name of uh, Flexin Mobile who acquired and published the complete list of songs that uh, Mr. Paul Baskerville, the disc jockey from Germany, had played on his music program uh, titled Music for Jung Lut in 1984. Effectively ruling out the theory that the mysterious song was part of their, that playlist. Okay, so it was recorded, uh, so then we can conclude that the song was not recorded from that show. However, the quest continued with the analysis of other playlists, including those from another radio program called Their Club and Nat Club in October and November of 84. Man, so these people really go out of their ways huh, to, to do their homework and to try to find the solution. That's pretty awesome. Uh, but I guess the, de the leads went cold and uh, the song still remained a mystery as of 2019. But uh, in uh, late 2020, uh, the plot thickened when uh, a Discord user, which is another online community named Fleer, uh, examined the tape recording 
uh, of the song and discovered a 10 kilohertz line. Okay, so this is like a deep, deep dive into the song. Uh, the 10 kilohertz line is a character characteristic uh, present in other bass 4-1 songs. What does that really mean in, in, in simple terms? Well, this line of code uh, is found virtually on all NDR radio broadcasts at the time. So it's an, a digital footprint used in the 80s by the NDR radio station, which um, debunked the possibility of the song being aired on any other station other than NDR. Okay, so we narrow it down to the radio station. We have kind of narrowed it down to the year, 1983 or 1984. And we know that it was not on uh, Music for Young Lou. We know that it was not on their club or neck club and uh we know that it wasn't played in october november of 84. so those are the facts you know that's like what what we we have um established so far so it was played in and uh, we know that it was played in ndr radio station as if it's scripted for intrigue, Lydia, who's the sister of Darius, who initially recorded the song, made a pivotal revelation on the 2nd of November of 2021. She went back to Reddit, and she actually posted that her son had found a box full of tapes while they were renovating her apartment. And within this hidden treasure trove was a tape containing a very high quality of the mysterious song. Despite having a different track list, speculation arose that it was made from the same recording evident and shared artifacts with the initial tape. The saga of the most mysterious song on the internet continues, leaving our musical detectives yearning for more clues. So they found a better quality, but uh, it actually came from the same original recording. So it only provided us with a better way to hear it, analyze it, we'll see. So before we go into some of the, the, the theories behind this, I'm going to play it again for those people that are just coming in the show. Now, this is uh, a, a song called The Most Mysterious Song on the Internet, recorded in Germany in 1983, uh, from a radio station by NDR. Okay, that's all we know. Uh, does it sound familiar to you? Have you heard it before? Are you familiar with uh, with this uh, with this topic? And if you want to share anything, go ahead and comment. Here it goes. We'll see. Okay. Very cool song, man. I'm starting to like it every day. Every time I hear it more and more, it would be a, since I don't think anybody has the copyright for that song, it will make it cool as your, as my intro song, but 
somebody will come up in the future and then all your videos or all my videos will be copywritten. <laughs> the vocalist sounds very familiar, a little like Falco. Yeah, Falco, that's that's a good catch. Widow. We all remember Rock Me Amadeus, right? This is a and he was German descent too, Falco. Yeah, he had that one hit, uh, Rock Me Amadeus, in the in the eighties. Um, it does sound a little bit like him. I wonder if people, but if it was Falco, obviously it would be uh, people would have known right away. I mean, this guy was somebody who was super, super um, famous. But could it be maybe like a like a deep cut, if you will? Like a deep cut of uh, of one of his songs, or maybe an unreleased track could have been. It doesn't sound like it's recording during a live studio, so, uh, during a concert, obviously, or maybe like a small gig. But actually, I'm gonna do some digging on my own here because it does sound a little bit like Falco. That was a good pickup, Widow. Hey, Rafa, how are you? Sounds good. What's the name of it? Well, the name of the song that we're discussing today is actually it doesn't have a name. It sounds the most mysterious song on the internet. <clears throat> I put a link on it. Uh, you can find it under that name. Some people think it says, like, the wind, uh, but it, it's hard to discern uh, the lyrics for it. And if I do uh, the most mysterious song on the internet lyrics, let's see what we can come up with. Yeah, I'm going to do it a little bit. Uh, unknown artist, I like the wind. So they say, like, the wind... Uh, supposedly says like the wind you came here running take the consequence the consequence of living there's no space there's no tomorrow there's no sense communication let's see if we can kind of make that out at the beginning i'll play it and uh, like the wind you came here running take the consequences of living there's no space there's no tomorrow there's no sense of communication let's see if we can at least make the first out of Test pretty on point, you know. They, 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 they did a good job trying to uh, trying to uh, see what the lyrics were all about. I think they're pretty on point. I don't know about the uh, a long, dirty way in the subway of your mind, but uh, you know, weirder, weirder lyrics have been written. All right, so going back to our final part of the show here, we're gonna kind of explore uh, a little bit uh, about the theories behind it. You know, uh, there's always theories. Good song for Vikings getting ready for war. Heck yeah, that's a great song for Vikings. Um, yeah, but we're going to leave it at that, buddy. <laughs> so as we kind of concluded, well, I, I, I'm not, not going to include we, but uh, Widow came, came up with a, it could have been a, a singer named Falco from the Germany back in the 80s. I was, I'm going to do some dive on my own into, into that, see if that's that was a song, maybe an un, unreleased track by Falco. So um, 
some of the investigators uh, have widely concurred that the vocalist uh, exhibits a European accent, uh, well, obviously, although the precise origin remains elusive. Right? German could it be a myriad of, of countries. A prevailing theory among users suggests the uh, utilization of the Yamaha DX7 synthesizer. There you go. A widow, uh, widow actually uh, came up with that too. That's pretty cool. Release in 83. Okay, in, craft, in crafting that the distinct leads that uh, play along the track. Speculation has arisen uh, regarding the recording date, leaning more towards 84 uh, rather than 83, as we had spoken earlier. But uh, this time frame is actually supported by the con con contemporaneous release dates of most songs on the cassette tape. <clears throat> I mean, meaning when it was recorded. Uh, so, you know, adding to this hypothesis is the techniques tape deck, uh, which were actually thought, oh, okay, I get what they're saying. So they're actually saying that the recording of this being a live recording in 84 uh, tends to be more credible because of the equipment that Darius had to record live from the radio station. So technique tape decks, which is what Darius was utilizing uh, or presumed employed by Darius, who is the gentleman who recorded this, uh, aligns with the same manufacturing year. So the technique, okay, I got you. So the, the, we have possible release date uh, secondary to the release of the uh, the machinery needed to record uh, off the live radio, which I'm sure a lot of your listeners used to do. I used to record a lot of music off the of the internet, um, of the internet. What am I talking about? Of the radio, you know, having to wait for that right song to come out. You pressed. Uh, you would have the three buttons pressed. You have the pause and record. Two buttons, pause and record. And as soon as the song came out, you lifted your little finger from the pause button and there you go and then you always hated it when uh, the DJ added a couple of more words uh, eventually those words would probably make it into your memory because I have there's a lot of songs that I listen to up until this day and I still remember what the DJ said at a particular point in the song uh, that I recorded back in the day and um, the, the these tapes that used to have two little slots on the top uh, for those uh, don't understand look look at a cassette tape online they used to have two little uh, dots i would say dot, holes on top and it was uh, if it was manufactured for recording uh one of these uh, two of these little um bevels if you will or, or lips if two two more present there that meant that the table was getting ready to be it will give you the capability to record on it once you recorded on the tape and you did not want to record anymore or you did it just kind of cut those little things off little plastic pieces and then you were unable to press the record button there was always cheats you know if you wanted to record on a tape that was sold uh, uh you know with already music in it and you wanted to let's say you wanted to record over your mom's frank sinatra tape you would add uh cassette tape you would add the tape like scotch tape on top of those little holes and that would give you the ability to record over mom's uh cassettes or you could just uh, make a little ball out of paper and stuff it in there and that would also give you the ability for you to record over previously recorded tapes. Uh, mind you that, uh, you know, if you use a tape many times, the quality would deteriorate uh, significantly. But, you know, back in those days, we were happy with what, whatever quality we could get. Um, let's see here. So... All right, so that we, we talked about that how that aligned with the technology. So we have uh, the, what what facts we have. We have the radio station. We have the date that it was recorded, the approximately, and um, we excluded a couple of shows that it could have been recorded from. Those are facts. Uh, so despite having no recollection of playing the song, DJ Paul Baskerville, uh, Baskerville, sorry. Uh, perhaps stated that it could be a discarded demo, demo recorded, played once by an NDR radio presenter and subsequently discarded. Yeah, I mean, we talked about that a few minutes ago. Could it have been a demo? Uh, yeah, but it was a heck of a demo. I mean, it sounded great. Why would it, somebody just play it and then, and, and then throw it away? Um, it sounded a demo worth keeping, you know? I mean, if it's made it into some DJ's hand and this DJ wants to play it on a radio station, I don't think a DJ would just kind of play it once and then just cast it out. 
An intriguing revelation actually came out in March of 2021. So uh, as of right now, we're up to date with all our information, okay? Uh, suggesting that a Viennese singer, Christian Brald, Christian uh, Brald, spelled B-R-A-N-D-L, and drummer Ronnie Urini composed and performed the song in 83, with both German and English versions available. Allegedly recorded by the late Fred Janish uh, at the late, I'm sorry, allegedly recorded at the late Fred Janish. Yeah, you know, I can't, just can't pronounce German, man. German kills me. Um, allegedly recorded in the late Fred, Fred Jackish, Mariah Hilton Straffen studio in Vienna. Sorry for butchering that. Saxophonist Heinz Hoschkrainer claimed to have been present for a planned saxophone element although it was never recorded. So here we got a pretty good lead. And this is as of March, 2021. Singer, we have a singer, we have a, maybe we have a drummer, and we have somebody who was supposed to play, but did not play a saxophone. I don't really picture a saxophone in the song. Maybe that's why it, ended, it, it did not end up making it. Uh, a preliminary mix purport, uh, purportedly made its way into NDR Radio in 1984. Okay, so here we have such of a cool revelation. While well, Urini corroborated this account, and he offered an old typewritten version of the German lyrics as evidence, doubts persist due to the lack of definite proof. I agree. I mean... A lot of people can come out and say, yeah, that was uh, that was me and my boys. We recorded this song. And uh, what do you guys have for proof? Well, we have this paper here that, <laughs> that shows lyrics. I mean, yeah, I don't know. But it's interesting to consider. Uh, Robert Wolf, Mr. Brandel's music associate and Shubsky band from and contends that Brandel's voice is unrecognizable in the song and that the drums resemble an electronic drum machine rather than Urini style, okay? So we have somebody coming forward saying, hey, it was me, and uh, we recorded it here, here. The only evidence I have is a piece of paper. And then we have somebody who knows these two cats, and it's like, yeah, you know what? It doesn't really sound like his musical style, and uh, the drums, yeah, the drums sound kind of electronic. So I'm going to kind of, by, I'm, I'm going to keep going because I don't, I don't believe in those quote-unquote revelations. Going back a few years to May 27, 2019, uh, an Australian music news website called Tone Deaf initiated coverage of the song, marking the inception of discussion around this mysterious track. In this particular article, uh, author Tyler Jenke delved into the early stages of the search, drawing parallels to a 2013 quest for a song later identified as On the Roof by Swedish musician Johan Lindel, uh, which I listened to earlier today. And uh, yeah, no, there wasn't any comparison. Uh, it sounds maybe similar-ish in a way, but not by a long shot, it's not the song. If you want to hear, go to Johan Lindel On the Roof. Compare the tracks, compare the style. I didn't really do much for much for me to be honest. The the, 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 the on the roof song's pretty cool, but no, it's it's definitely not um, definitely not the same song. So spanning back from back and forth from 2019 to 2021, American YouTuber Justin Wang dedicated five episodes on his uh, website on his YouTube series Tales from the Internet to unraveling the mystery surrounding the song and tracking the evolution of the search. So if you're if you're interested, um, check it out. Justin Wang, W H A N G, he has a series called Tales from the Internet. Go ahead and. Um, find those videos if you're interested and, and see if you guys can if, if he has more um leads for you guys to follow if you wish to do so uh mr wang's insightful videos played a crucial role in rallying internet users to actively contribute to the ongoing efforts to identify this elusive track um adding another layer to the mystery Various other artists have actually created covers and remix versions of the song. Notably, uh, an American band called Mephisto Walls released a cover title, Like the Wind, in their 2020 album. 
All of these winding roads have contributed to the already growing tapestry of interpretation surrounding this enigmatic musical piece. So there you go, folks. A very uh, strange uh, mystery uh, about trying to decipher an unknown, unknown song. What I like about um, our kind of time in life, it's the fact that we, we can amass a vast amount of people into trying to solve mysteries. You know, people get, uh, people tend to go on, on, on hunting uh, and uh, they, they, they get to go on these rants and uh, they get obsessed technically by, uh, by a mystery to want to be able to solve it. A couple of years ago, there was this um, internet mystery that I was kind of into for a few months. And it was about this uh, gentleman from uh, New Mexico that supposedly hid a treasure uh, in the, um, Yellowstone Park. And it was actually found in Yellowstone Park. He would. Uh, he gave a poem out saying that he uh, had a mysterious box that he buried uh, with all kinds of goodies inside, and it was actually found uh, days before the gentleman passed away. He wrote a book, and uh, if you guys are interested about that, maybe we can do a show in the future. But there's always like internet mysteries and things that are. You know what's funny is that we there are these things that we cannot solve. You know, so even with all our brain power, we. We we uh, we can solve these mysteries, and this is surely this has uh, you know it's been around since two thousand. It's been around for twenty years. Twenty years, people have been able to uh, unable to identify the track in the song. Um, going back here to the comment section, let's see, uh, widow, whoever uh, it was had access to high dollar equipment for the DX synth under used to cost two thousand eighty three. Today's money that's seven. Yeah, that's. Uh, Big, yeah, that I don't know if a garage band will be able to afford that. That's great, Widow. That's some awesome insight. Uh, almost eight grand for a synthesizer, let alone studio time to create a demo that made it into somebody's hands and was played once and then cast it. I, um, what are your theories for our listeners? Well, what are your theories behind it? What do you guys think? Uh, it's the most plausible answer for me. I think that uh, this could have been uh, an indie band, okay, an independent band that uh, perhaps was signed to a small label, and uh, they must have been a, a one or two piece, probably a one piece. So it could have been just one guy like a one-man band, if you will, signed to a very indie to an indie label. Uh, or uh, it could have been a musical producer that just had some time and equipment laying around. Uh, music producers have the, the skill to, to not only record, obviously, uh, recording engineering. Uh, and they probably just uh, messed around, had a song going on their head for a while, and just finally laid it out, composed it in... Uh, they had a connection buddy in the radio who played it as a, as a gag being like, Hey, you know, I recorded a song and uh, go ahead and play it on the radio. See what people think it was played and it was forgotten about it. Uh, and then I'm sure well, pop, this gentleman passed away that ended up recording the song. And that's why we don't have anybody stepping forward. And as things often do, uh, you know, 20 years later, uh, the internet takes over. So that's probably what it was. It was even there to, to, to what I can think, sound engineer, sound producer, um, who had some type and time in a studio, in between bands, or just you know after working there for years, able to record the lyrics uh, on its own, able to use a drum machine, fancy equipment, has a buddy that works at a radio station. Song gets played once, and goes mute. That would lend more to the credence that you know it wasn't really a band that was out there gigging or touring. Because otherwise, then somebody will be, or a large band, because then you have more members involved and more people that would remember, like, hey, I was, you know, I was the drummer, or hey, I was the bass player. If it was one man who made the track, it's less possibility, especially if the man passed away for somebody to come forward. Uh, the other possibility I was speaking might be a, a band, uh, an unknown band that just disbanded and uh, could have been a small band, and people either passed away or are not um, too fond of internet lore. 
<clears throat> so they're still out there. They just haven't heard the, their, their song being played. <clears throat> I played in a few bands myself back in the 90s. And we made some recordings, and I'm sure if one of those songs had made it, I probably wouldn't recognize it, you know, as something that I made. Especially, I was an instrumentalist. I played guitar, so I wouldn't recognize it. Um, most people, you know, in the 80s, they were probably in the 30s and their 40s. Maybe their 20s. They're probably in their 60s, 70s by now. What are the chances of them going on forums or investigating strange phenomena? So, you know, I think... Uh, that's my my two cents on the whole deal in respect to the most mysterious song on the internet hey jennifer how are you good to have you on the show we're getting uh, i'm bypassing the the news and i'm going straight into the nitty-gritty of the stories that's why the shows are a little bit shorter now they used to run about you know an hour and a half to two hours, but we did about forty minutes of news, which I stopped doing. So I think I just I rather just go for the story uh, because you know when I listen to uh, a YouTube uh, or YouTube channel podcast kind of channel, I like them to get down to business. I, I don't like all the fluff, so that's I'm kind of doing it that way, um, and that's why the shows are a little bit shorter. But uh, sometimes we have our late listeners that may be busy doing life and they come in. Um, so, yeah, you, you like the show, Jennifer, if you listen to it over again. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Well, if I don't have anybody uh, chiming in in regards to their, um, you know, their theories, then I'm going to call it a show. And I'll be back tomorrow, Thursday. Remember, there's no show on Friday. I'm heading out of town. Uh, there's no shows on Saturday or Sunday. So I'll be back next Monday. Uh, and if there are any topics that you guys want me to research and talk about, I'll be. it'll be an awesome thing. Sometimes, you know, you tend to kind of run out of, of strange topics to discuss just because, um, you know, they've been... They've been discussed ad nauseum in other channels. And uh, and sincerely, this is a channel that I envision as a call-in show, not much of a, you know, not much of just a, of a, of a podcast based on a, on a topic. But, you know, I'll take that until, um, I'm going to take that until, until we start kind of doing what, what, what I want to do. And that's to, to take live calls, shadow people. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I know that Art Bell actually had an experience with the shadow people. Uh, I might consider that for tomorrow's show. Shadow people will be a cool show. Um, yeah, so that's sort of, you know, <clears throat> I don't mind doing the research. It takes a little bit of time. Obviously you don't want to put something, you know, nonsensical, uh, together. Miracles. Hey, Michaela, how are you? Miracles will be... Uh, Clutch says Shadow People playing it, I guess, uh, playing the song. Yeah, maybe it was the yeah, Shadow People. Uh, Michaela, Miracles. Miracles, yeah, Miracles is a cool topic. It's broad, but maybe I can do like one or two instances of um, of a cool miracle that has taken place and has been validated, you know. I think uh, distilling uh, the topics it works better for me because there's it's just a, it's a wide net to cast if you want to discuss everything. Uh, but yeah, definitely miracles will be considered. I can probably think of some cool stuff that has happened. Uh, megalithic structure, the Nephilim. We we did uh, some Nephilim stuff clutch a few shows back, and I think we've done megalithic structures with the old gang. If you want to go and uh, the, the Nephilim, I know for sure we we covered recently. If you want to go into archives now, it would help me tremendously to keep building. So, you know, the, the best place to recommend is strangedayslive.com because that, that sort of takes you, uh, it's kind of, it serves as a good gateway for people to find our show. And, you know, God forbid, I get, we get strikes and the channels closed. That's going to be the only gateway for you guys to, to reach me at is strangedayslive.com. We did get a strike, but, uh, you know, that's over and done with. And um, I don't foresee me getting into trouble again. Or, you know, one, the least people you have involved in the show, the more control you have. So I don't foresee anybody uh, getting in trouble and having us get a strike. We kind of, I kind of know what, what words and what's, what topics to 
uh, stay away from. But uh, yeah, so uh, recommend us, recommend me to your friends so I can keep doing this. Uh, you know, it gives me, um, sometimes I'm tired and I don't really want to do much, but, uh, you know, it, it, having you be a, a, a listener on a daily basis and showing support actually does mean a lot more. And it's funny because a lot of creators say those things, but unless you become a creator, you notice how little things go a long way and um, gives us that energy to kind of keep on uh, keep on going forth with your ideas. You know, it's uh, we're just barely a three month old uh, channel under this format, and uh, we've been doing good. I like it. I just got to be patient until you know we start getting the calls, which is sort of like my dream. But uh, Bigfoot, Bigfoot will be awesome. Thank you, Michaela. She says, I love listening to your show, Doc. You do a good job. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Bigfoot, uh, I think that's probably will be a big show. Uh, that will be a good show. I mean, but uh, it's a lot of stuff to go through. I want to kind of hone in, if you will, like a boutique. Do like the the little things that I've never. Uh, I think this better market uh, for for the little topics because you then have to. As far as like Bigfoot, it's it's an awesome topic, but I have to compete with channels that have done hours and hours of research. But I can maybe concentrate on a case or two. You know, my favorite case is the original one, which is uh, the Peter the Patterson Gimlin tape, which I personally believe to be a, a true depiction and of a Bigfoot, just from the research that I've done. Uh, I think that's the best example of a of a cryptid on tape, if you will, that uh, we've had so far. But yeah, those are things to definitely consider. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. I enjoyed making it, actually. It was uh, being a musician and being uh, able to kind of listen to the song. And, you know, we just cast it a net a little bit more further. Hopefully somebody's able to to recognize it. Uh, let's see. Clutch Bigfoot. Yeah, D.B. Cooper we did. D.B. Cooper is definitely there. Bermuda Triangle used to be interesting, but now does nothing. Yeah, I agree with you. Bermuda, the Bermuda Triangle now is like, bleh. When I was a kid, that was like the the biggest thing was the Bermuda Triangle. Everybody was fascinated by them. Um, maybe the project with the ship and the dudes face into it. Yeah, that's the project, the Philadelphia experiment. <clears throat> that would be cool. But those are topics that will take me a few days to research. You know, I'm, I'm doing the research while I work. So, um, but no, definitely. Thank you for recommending those topics to the. Yeah, Philadelphia experiment would be kind of cool. I don't think we've we've ever we've skimmed through it in the past, but we haven't covered. But DB Cooper, we do have a uh, we do have a, a show dedicated to DB Cooper Clutch. So just go into the archives, go to strangedays dot strange days live dot com, go to the archive section, and uh, there is a DB Cooper uh, that we did there, and it's pretty in depth. So you'll um, you'll enjoy the Sierra sounds. I've never heard of the Sierra sounds. I've heard of the Taos hum, but I've never heard of the Sierra sounds. That would be kind of cool to do. Well, guys, with that being said, thank you again for joining me uh, on this Wednesday night at uh, almost 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time in California as we're getting ready here for a storm for uh, what they call now atmospheric rivers. It's funny. They always find names to 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 freak people out now now they're called atmospheric rivers make you feel like the whole earth is going to fall the whole sky is going to fall upon you widow says topics uh tons of topics for you to do doc especially within the u.s like the mount builders yes neolithic structures very fascinating roman uh made wall along the west coast and much more i like that roman made wall because I like topics that I haven't really uh, delved too much into it because it helps me to kind of maintain me uh, interested. So Roman made wall. Yeah, I think maybe that will be a, a good thing to cover. I'll think about it, and I'll be back tomorrow with you guys. I wish you a pleasant night. wish you guys have a safe, uh, if you live in California, uh, have a safe uh, drive to work tomorrow. I know it's going to be pouring. In California, it's not a good state to drive in the rain. For some reason, Californians don't have, uh, we don't have the, the scale. So we're kind of used to speeding too much. So when it comes to rain, we tend to make uh, mistakes and oopsies. 
but uh, yeah, uh, the Sierra sounds are recorded. But yeah, that's what I figured. It's when they they kind of yell and and scream and they hit they knock on the woods. So it's pretty cool. We can probably have some samples of those. Well, God bless you guys. Have a good night. I'm gonna part away with the most mysterious song playing in the back. I'm gonna go ahead and play it for you guys so you guys can hear a little bit more. And if you want to find this song, it's called The Most Mysterious Song on the Internet. And go ahead and give me a like for the show and share it. Please share it with your friends, like-minded people that like the mysteries, uh, so we can start uh, growing the channel even more, getting more listens, okay? Uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, without further ado, here's the most mysterious song on the Internet. Thank you. 